Now, something I see quite a bit when it comes to any sort of programmer language, in this case, I'm using PHP as an example, is something called nesting. And nesting isn't necessarily a bad thing whenever it comes to programming, but it is something that people tend to overdo quite a bit. And there are better solutions to it other than just keep nesting things inside each other. So all of a sudden you have this spider web of things going on inside your code. Uh, let me just go ahead and demonstrate what exactly I mean here. Let's do a very basic PHP 101 example here. Let's say I have a form inside a page and a send some information to this other file, which is a PHP file. And inside this file, I have to do something with the data submitted from the form. So typically in that sort of case, we would go in and we would have a if condition and we would actually go ahead and check for a certain request method. So we can say we want to write in a server a super global to check for a certain request method. So we can say request underscore a method, then we can check if it's equal to a post method, because that might be something we want to do. So if this is the case, and the form is submitted correctly to access this page here, which is what we're checking for here, we would then go inside, we will grab some of the data. So let's say I have, you know, maybe like a first name. Uh, so we're going to set this one equal to a dollar sign underscore post method in order to grab a first name. I'm going to copy it down a couple more times because maybe the user is also submitting something else. So maybe the last name. So we can say last name. We might also have an email address being sent, you know, just some basic information that the user could, for example, you know, at some point send to this PHP file. Uh, what I would then do is maybe check if any of these inputs were left empty. So I would create another if condition. I would say something like, empty, which is a function we have inside PHP to check if one of these are empty. So I can say, is my first name empty and check for that. And then I can say, or is my last name empty? So we can say we have the last name, put that in here. You kind of get the idea here. You know, we're checking for something again and again. So in this case, we're checking for the email. And when we have something like this, we all of a sudden start creating all these different conditions inside conditions. And this is going to create this hierarchy of a spider web that keeps moving out until at some point we don't know which curly bracket belongs to which if statement inside our code because everything starts getting really messy. So let me just go ahead and create another one here. So let's go inside and say, oh, oh, by the way, I do also want to go in and check, is this actually a valid email that was submitted? So I can say, I want to run a filter underscore va, which is another function we have inside PHP. And I can check for a certain email. So I'm going to paste that in here comma, and then I can say I want to filter underscore validate underscore email, which is a built in email validation tool we have inside PHP. Now I do know we need to check if they're not empty. Okay, because I, I know that is something you have to do. Um, <laughs> see people typing in comments. My point here is that some point you're going to reach a point where we have an if condition inside an if condition inside an if condition, and this is going to create nesting and this is going to be a horrible mess inside your code. And there is a much better solution to this sort of thing. So instead of creating all these conditions inside of each other, what we're going to do is we're simply going to move them outside one another. So we're going to take these conditions and we're just going to, go and to delete them and move them outside each other. What we can do instead of creating all this nesting is move everything below each other. And then we would typically check for errors first. So in this case, I could say, okay, so if we did not access this page correctly, or you could do this by creating a else statement below and just do it in there instead. Uh, but my point is, is that if we did actually not get to this page correctly, then we would go in and we would use something like an exit function, you know, in order to actually exit out of the script here or a die function that does the same thing, except for not quite the same thing, but it is kind of interchangeable in a lot of cases. Uh, but using one of these is going to actually break out of the script here and stop everything from running, which is a really good thing, because that basically means that everything below here is not going to get run if we had a error message. So I could go in and say, okay, you know what, let's go ahead and send a user back to the front page using a header function, say location, say I want to send them back to my, I know I'm inside my index page here, but let's say I want to send them to my index.php file and then exit out of the script here. So this is actually what you would do in order for all the other code to stop running if there is some sort of error message. And then if there is no error message, then I can go below here and say, okay, well now, because I did enter this page correctly, I can paste in all this data submitted by the user and then go down and check for if these are empty. If they are, then I just do the same thing copy in our exit and also the header function inside this condition here and just send the user back if there is some sort of error message. If not, then we go down to the next condition, 
go in here, we try to validate the email. If this is not validated, then I just go inside the condition and I send the user back to the front page with a exit function to exit out of the script here. Uh, so doing it this way, is going to not allow nesting to happen. And this is basically a cleaner way of doing things. So you don't have to figure out, okay, which curly bracket belongs to which curly bracket because we do know it uh, because it's right here. So this is just a really good coding tip for a lot of cases. You know, I'm not saying nesting is bad, but if you overuse nesting, it is going to turn into a horrible mess inside your code. And this is the case, whether it being JavaScript or C sharp or whatever you might be programming, this is something that is a really good idea to just kind of know about so you don't create a, a horrible mess of nesting. So with that said, this is basically my point of this video here, just to kind of give people a small advice when it comes to writing conditions inside your code to avoid a horrible mess when it comes to nesting. So, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.